Good day, good day, good day, everybody. Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so I put up a video a few days ago with Motive Wave. Um, one of the hardest things I'm coming across is something called whipsaws. Whipsaws are very detrimental to your trading. There's different ways to attack it. But I just want to show you something. My, I use my own blog for resources because I've been, it's been about 10 years. So if you come in, if you if you were to type in at quantlabs.net slash blog uh, in the search whipsaw, you'll come across some very interesting articles that I even forget about. So one of them I came across was this one for MetaTrader MQ4, uh, a list of notes that I made. Uh, when was this article? So this is back in 2015, four years ago. And um, I just came across some of these here. Um, this one I'm very interested in is the Arun Oscillator. So if I go over to this link here, which is for MetaTrader, talks about it, blah, 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 blah. So I don't use MetaTrader and I probably won't because it's so restrictive. But again, I put up a video a few days ago showing MetaTrader, or sorry, Motive Wave. Type in Motive Wave and the name of indicator, and this is what I got. So they do have this. So I'm going to implement it. Here I am in Motive Wave, right here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. A couple things I want you to be aware of live trading right now uh, against OANDA. The Motive Wave is using OANDA uh, FX Trade. So these are the two ones we're going to test is the Euro Swiss Franc. USD Swiss franc and oddly enough I put up a news item on my Facebook group that said Swiss francs the strongest and so what we've seen for the last week. All right, so first things first, let's find how we can get this Arun uh Arun oscillator. So here we have oscillates between 100 to negative 100 period length Indicator definition is further expressed in condensed code, given the uh, code here, which is Java for the API or SDK, Software Development Kit. And here's the actual uh, oscillator, Arun oscillator. So let's check it out. So how do we find it? Uh, study Arun, oh yeah, I remember. I hope I can remember this. So if I come under study, um, I'm going to add a study. So we have no studies right now. I've shown this in previous Motive Wave. So if I type in a rune, so we have two choices. So we want the oscillator. So we have um, this overlay option, which we can't do. <clears throat> and we also can't do the uh, signaling. That's okay, because we're just using it for visual. Um, I got to tell you, every time I look at this thing, I, I really enjoy working with Motive Wave. Uh, just speeds up looking at things instead of puttering around in code and spending hours, maybe even days, trying to figure something out. So I'm just going to leave everything default. Let's see what we get here. So here we go. So we have an oscillator here. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Because we see now we are 15-minute data. Interesting. Oh, no. Hang on. So does our oscillator spike? See right here? This double dotted dashed line right here. It's not, well, actually it is useful because here it does potentially pick up a whipsaw there. Let's see if it does here. Okay, so it's saying there is a whipsaw coming here. Uh, so it goes in a flat mode and right about, I'm going to assume here, here. And there's a little whipsaw here. So, hmm, is this useful? Is this useful? Okay, so I am going to give this a potential. So we have here, there is no oscillation. Uh, here, interesting. This, this, this looks potentially uh, something worth investigating in the coding level. Okay. So the next question becomes, let me go, 
I like sometimes DuckDuckGo. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna look up TA Lib, see if there's an Arun. TA Lib, Arun. Let's just do that. Guys, so uh, the TA Lib GitHub. Yep, this is what we want. Arun oscillators. So we do have it. Um, let's see if we have it in the. Yes, we do. Arun, Arun oscillator. Beautiful. So we can try to use that. So point here in this video is really we look for something, an indicator. We can test it. So I, I could quickly test it on the hourly data. So this is what I love about something like um, Motive Wave because you can see how useful this, os this, this oscillator is. Or this, sorry, this. So you didn't pick it up here. So our magic number is about 50. Okay, so here's the here's the magic number we gotta watch out for. In, in the it's like RSI. In the range between 50, I'm gonna estimate, or negative 50 and 50. That's where we gotta be very careful. Um, because if it goes out of the, that range, then we have either a positive or a negative um negative uh, whipsaw coming, dare I say, I never thought I could say a positive whipsaw. So one other thing uh, I should mention here that I'm learning that might be very useful for some folks is uh, Hearst, the Hearst component, okay? This is really important as well. So I'm just gonna see if we can find it. Actually, I'll just do a search in. Um, so I'll clear this. So that's a good hint for whip sauce, uh, quite possibly. So let me look for another one I wanna show you is the Hearst, Hearst Cycles. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so, okay. Now, I'm not sure what this is. So developed by Hearst using repeating cycles to predict future market troughs and peaks. It's kind of like pivots that I've been playing around with. So here we go. Um, so hourly, hourly. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have to really understand what this means, but let me let me just show you what I'm looking at it. It's a fairly simple, um, a fairly simple calculation. So if I look up Hearst, it's called a Hearst component. I think Quantopian had no, uh, maybe Quantstart had a really good description of it. Um, just so, just letting you know, I, I'm moving into um, mean reversion. So this came up as one of the mean reversion. So yeah, this would be it. So this falls under mean reversion. Um, I'm just playing around with it, but whipsaw is just right now easily the worst part about trading. So you have three tests here we can use: ADF. Uh, Let's see here, we have testing for stationary. So here it is, Hearst component. So what the Hearst component does, this right here using this calculation, if it's less than half, then we have mean reverting. If it's equal, then it's a ge geometric Brownian motion, and meaning if it's greater than half or 0 0.5, then we, then we are into time series trending. I guess that's another way of saying momentum based. So this is really good to be able to shift between uh, shift between is is your time current time series that you're tracking mean reverting or trending or is it equal which I don't think would happen very often if it's a geometric Brownian motion because then if that's the case and you can switch out your strategy uh, or apply the right strategy technique in my case momentum making sure that that series is actually trending, 
um, and that's part of the the uh, whipsaw that so I see for a very long time. So that is a test that I should consider uh, to make sure that the time series over the certain time period I'm looking at is an actual trending time series. So let's say over two days worth hourly data is a trend. Is it trending? Yes. Then yeah, put it on the watch list. If it's not, then you know you're gonna you're gonna be experiencing what I'm experiencing: a lot of whipsaws, a lot of bad trades. And if down the line I can start trading a new strategy when it does mean revert uh, and apply that strategy when it does. So these are the sort of things I'm looking at to uh, consider when it comes to uh, more calculating and trading and forecasting. So I put this out there for you. Hopefully you got something out of it. Let me know and we shall talk to you later on.